Welcome! My name is Amy Jo and I'm here at Tamrac Nature Center. This is what we call our teaching garden. It is inside Discovery Hollow Nature Play area. And we are going to go and explore the garden. We are going to be looking for some plants that are emerging because spring is here! Thankfully, yay! So we are going to be looking for different plants that are starting their growing season right now. At the end of April, they are popping out of the ground and ready to grow. So we are going to be looking for different plants and we'll take a walk through the garden and we are going to look for the fresh new spring plants. You're ready to come on the garden tour with me? Come on, follow me. It is a beautiful sunny day and we are going to see what is growing in our garden. Follow me, the first spot that we're going to is a raised bed garden. Come on. Right here is one of my favorite uh, herbs uh, or plants growing in the garden. We have a raised bed garden and this is an advantage because it warms up quickly in the springtime. It keeps some critters out except for those 13 lion ground squirrels that are running around here. They figured out how to get in. Uh, so there's, a, there's another advantage is that uh, you can sit on it and work in it. So that's a couple different advantages of having a raised bed garden. Here we have garlic. This garlic has overwintered. It takes two, year, two years to grow, two seasons to grow. So it'll be harvested at the end of the year, at the end of the summer, and we, we can eat it or we can replant it for uh, the next year's growth. So that's our garlic. And we've got lots of it. Yummy! Come follow me and we'll check out some more plants. Juneberry, but uh, that's oftentimes when you harvest it, is strawberries. We got a strawberry patch all along our little mini orchard where we have some of our fruit trees. We got cherries, we've got apples, and it's just a little mini orchard. In our mini orchard we have another plant often called the pie plant and it's one of the first spring pl plants to start coming up. Let's go take a look at that one. Right here, this lovely plant, you do not want to eat its leaves, you want to eat its stem or petiole. And that is this plant right here. That is rhubarb. Yummy, yummy pie plants. Oh, and then right here, we have our cherry tree, which is uh, just budding right now. Uh, and behind me, we have our different uh, apple trees. So you could go explore your backyard or you could go explore your neighborhood. Go explore a local uh, park to see uh, the leaf buds or they might be flower buds that are coming up from the trees right now. That'd be a good activity to do outside. And follow me one more place that I know that some springtime growth is happening. Follow me this way. Over here is our herb garden. This big, huge raised bed is our herb garden. And if you like spicy, oniony things, you will love these. And these are delicious right away in spring. We've got our chives. Yummy, yummy, yummy chives. And these overwinter and they pop up right away in the spring. There was actually uh, uh, some snow on these guys just a few weeks ago. 
And right here, we have a bed of chamomile. If you pet it like a, a, a kitty cat and smell it, you can smell the chamomile. And we do harvest that and use it for tea. So uh, I invite you guys to go out, like I said, in your neighborhood, your local park, one of the Ramsey County parks, and see what's growing. We are at one of our raised bed gardens. We have something already growing in here. These right here are our walking onions. And they're called Egyptian walking onions. And they're a perennial, so they'll keep coming back. And they also uh, plant themselves. So they'll get really tall, about this tall or so. And then on the top, they will have the, the flower, and then the flower turns into the onion bulbs. And then the plant falls over, and then it replants itself. So it'll replant itself every year, and you can harvest this plant at different stages. So right now I could harvest the greens and cook it up in a stir fry or a soup as a green onion. Uh, right now I could dig it up and use the bottom as, a, as an onion. Uh, I could use these little guys as kind of like a, a, a little teeny pearl onion. They're very hard, very, very flavorful. You gotta chop them up if you wanna use, dice them or you could use them like in a roast as a, as a pearl onion type of thing. And these are all from last year, and actually I've got a couple buckets still uh, uh, of them from last year. So it's a very prolific plant. And right now we are going to plant a different plant amongst the uh, Egyptian walking onions. We are going to plant some mini broccoli, some people call it uh, broccolini, uh, and that is going to grow alongside of it. This one is an annual, so you have to planted every year and the broccolini and the Egyptian walking onion are companion plants that means they get along well together they also benefit each other sometimes it's nutrient based giving each other different nutrients sometimes it helps a companion plants help ward off pests so my challenge to you is to look up broccoli broccolini it, uh, onions, any kind of onion. This one is an Egyptian walking onion. Look them up and see what they do for each other. There's many different kinds of companion plants and there's lots of books out on uh, companion plant planting. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is we are going to uh, plant it and I'm just going to zigzag the broccoli through the uh, plants, that, the onions that are already growing and so it'll be very beautiful. Uh, it'll be very a uh, tall bed with two different uh, veggies. You can cook them together if you want. So it's kind of tasty. My co-worker, wonderful Stacy, has written down mini broccoli. And these get uh, planted. So I'll go like that. And then I will take out some seeds. And some people like to put uh, multiple seeds in a, in a hole. I usually only put one because then you have to you have to weed them, weed one of them out because you don't want them uh, over competing each other. So I just put one per hole. And I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to go about one fourth of an inch. So that's just about that far to the, your first uh, first joint there, or even less than that. So I'm just going to go like that. And we will do that for, the, for a whole row. We have uh, planted our mini broccoli or broccolini, whatever you would like to call it. We have planted them about 10 inches to 12 inches apart. And now the last part I need to do is water them. You want to water them so that way they don't, uh, so they start growing and so they don't blow away. And, uh, that's a very important part is, of course, watering your plants. So it just needs a good little soak in and watering a couple times uh, every, every few days to get them growing. And the reason why we did direct, uh, why we directly planted them is these are a cold 
uh, crop, which means that they don't mind it cold and you can plant them. This is April that I've been, end of April that I've been planting these. And they will get a, and they, they're a long growing crop. And I can, and the mini broccoli, uh, it takes a while to grow and then you can keep harvesting, keep harvesting it through it all until fall. So it's long growing plants. And I direct planted it. It's a cold weather crop. But to tell you the truth, I started some in the greenhouse also. This is one of those plants where you can direct seed sow into the ground. It's also something you can transplant. So I started some indoors and those are going to go in another row on this side. And it's going to be kind of an experiment to see uh, the direct sown seeds if they slower, shorter than the transplanted ones. Which one does better? Drex seed sowing or, or transplanting? It's going to be kind of a fun experiment to see which one grows better. And so hopefully we will open up the garden this uh, spring, this summer, and you can come out and take a look at the mini broccoli and the uh, Egyptian walking onions. So you can also try this at your house or your uh, or your neighborhood community garden. Uh, uh, goodbye from Tamarack Nature Center.